Why does China need a base in the underbelly of Russia? This message, material, was created and or disseminated by a foreign mass media outlet performing the functions of a foreign agent and or a Russian legal entity performing the functions of a foreign agent. The PRC is building another military facility in Tajikistan. Does this indicate its desire to move Russia away from dominance in Central Asia? The question of China's construction of a military base in the Wakhan Gorge in Tajikistan, near the Afghan border, has been resolved. The government of Tajikistan has approved the project, coordinated with the Public Security Ministry of China. However, the Tajik Ministry of Internal Affairs calls the facility a base for the Rapid Response Group of the Directorate for Combating Organized Crime. The number of contingent, Chinese, Tajik or mixed, as well as the nomenclature of military equipment is not disclosed. Dushanbe claims that the facility will be built with Chinese grant money, various reports indicate that the estimate is $8 million $10 million, and not with loans. This raises a number of questions. First, does China really already have a military base in Tajikistan and has been using it for the last five years, and will it begin construction of a second one now? Dushanbe and Beijing refute information about the presence of a Chinese military base in Tajikistan, but the Western press has conducted more than one investigation and found, including by satellite imagery, that it is located in the sparsely populated Murgab district. Second, Tajikistan is a member of the CSTO, on its territory is located the 201st Russian military base, staffed with the latest and constantly replenished weapons. Is there any doubt that the CSTO and the Russian military base are not enough to protect Tajikistan from radical Islamist organizations, concentrated in Afghanistan on the border with Tajikistan? Or does Dushanbe's request to Beijing, or vice versa, for additional assistance have a different motivation? How compatible are the Chinese base, or bases, with the Russian one, and will such a neighborhood affect the balance of power in the region? Is the Celestial Empire seeking to gradually squeeze the CSTO, Russia, military monopoly out of Central Asia? And finally, what is Moscow's reaction to the construction of a Chinese military base in Tajikistan? It is impossible to answer all these questions unequivocally, since the interests of China, Russia and the United States, whether it is because of them that Moscow and Beijing are more active than before in establishing their military presence in the region, coincide. But one thing is certain. So far Russia has not reacted in any way to the Tajik Chinese project, and probably there is an explanation for that. As for other issues, we have to think that both Russia and the CSTO can protect Tajikistan from militants invading its territory, which is in the security interests of the whole of Central Asia, Russia itself, the CIS as a whole and China. But the strengthening of Tajikistan's defense capabilities, which Russia is constantly working on, is also of interest to China which fears that militants will move into China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. In addition, China is interested in control over Afghanistan, in which it has invested solidly, and in the protection of finances invested in the economy of Tajikistan. That is, the safety of their money and, consequently, their influence, Beijing guards the security of the country in which they are investing. By the way, the state debt of Tajikistan to China is about $1. 5 billion, and China is the most important trade and economic partner of the RT. Thus, the military presence of China in Tajikistan is quite justified, especially since the latter can ensure neither its own security nor the functioning of its economy. It is not that Russia is not enough for it, but other assistance is also not superfluous. True, it cannot be gratuitous from Beijing, as well as from Moscow, by definition. It will establish itself in Tajikistan for a long time. The question is on what scale. Incidentally, the media has already reported that Dushanbe has offered to give Beijing full control over the Chinese military base already in the country and to refuse any payment for rent in exchange for military aid from China. The relevant document also refers to the presence of Chinese personnel at the base, but it is currently owned by Tajikistan. A proposal to give ownership of the base was made in July by President Imomali Rahman to Chinese Defense Minister Wei Fang during his visit to Dushanbe. Whether Beijing accepted it is unknown. As for China's gradual squeeze out of the Russian military presence in Tajikistan. Note that Tajikistan conducts joint military exercises with both Russia and China. Both countries are financing the reconstruction of border outposts in the Central Asian Republic, the most vulnerable in the context of a border breach from Afghanistan. So Moscow and Beijing have common interests in Central Asia, particularly in Tajikistan. On the one hand, 
it is normal to complement efforts to help each other in such an explosive region. However, only if it does not create fierce competition between the world powers. But at present no serious contradictions between them should arise, because, although the number of personnel of the Chinese base, its existing and or future, as well as its armament is not known, we can assume that it is still very far from the Russian military facility. In addition, Tajikistan, in the context of security and receipt of funds in the country, is almost completely dependent on Russia, and there is no need to quarrel with it. So, at the moment there is hardly any need to worry about the balance of power, the Russian military base, as well as the CSTO, umbrella, is definitely a priority for Tajikistan. As for the longer term, China is likely to move towards playing its own game in Central Asia. Both in the economy and in the sphere of security. The only thing that can prevent this is the need for a tandem between Moscow and Beijing in the region in order to prevent the military presence of the United States and or other nuclear powers in the region. China prepares for war. Xi stockpiling, flying death sentence, hypersonic nukes. China is rapidly manufacturing a hypersonic nuclear missile dubbed the flying death sentence, and which experts fear could give it the edge over Joe Biden's United States and Western allies. The Dongfeng 17 or DF-17, which is launched from land, can reach speeds of 7,680 miles per hour, 10 times the speed of sound, and has a range of up to 1,600 miles. Wu Qian, a spokesman for China's defense ministry, said Beijing had commissioned both the D-17 and the DF-26, an intermediate-range ballistic missile with a range of more than 3,000 miles, in large numbers. China announced the DF-17 two years ago with a four-minute clip of what it called the blindingly fast and unstoppable missile capable of evading all existing anti-missile shields. The DF-17, which includes a hypersonic glide vehicle, can be fitted with a nuclear warhead. Additionally, China, led by President Xi Jinping, is also working on another missile, the DF-27, which will have a range up to 5,000 miles, potentially putting the U.S. state of Hawaii within range. Military analyst Malcolm Davis, writing for the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, said the DF-17 had been highlighted in the U.S. Department of Defense's 2021 China Military Power Report, published earlier this year. Mr. Davis said, China's expanding nuclear arsenal and the growing concern that Beijing is moving towards a launch on warning posture, together with the potential for a sub-strategic and tactical capacity, are raising questions about whether it is also shifting from its traditional, no first use, posture. It states, the PRC's lack of transparency regarding the scope and scale of its nuclear modernization program raises questions regarding its future intent as it fields larger, more capable nuclear forces. Single quote quote. Mr. Davis added, these developments matter in terms of timing, not just in relation to an anticipated crisis over Taiwan, but also because the Biden administration is considering the possibility of adopting a no first use or sole purpose declaration as part of its 2022 nuclear posture review.